Folks, good evening and welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show here on Newsmax TV. We got breaking news tonight, not this Biden BS you just heard. An anti-American socialist in Buffalo, New York, defeated the city's four-term Democrat mayor in a major upset in Tuesday's Democrat socialist primary. India Walton beat Mayor Byron Brown 52% to 45% with 100% of the precincts reporting. Now, I say that Ms. Walton is an anti-American because she's an admitted socialist. The United States was founded and has stood in opposition to socialists and communists for centuries. Socialism isn't our way, thus it's anti-American. Now, you might be asking yourself, how does this happen? Well, I'm going to tell you. Indifference and apathy. And if we, the people don't begin to take a stand on this, our nation will fall. The Constitution, use it or lose it. That's the message in tonight's preamble. Courtesy of a corrupt media, a leftist government education system, and a socialist Democrat party. Our people have been conditioned to do whatever government tells us to do. That is the foundation for socialism. The very concept is nauseating and against the founding principles of our republic. Real Americans believe in a government of, by, and for the people. We tell government what to do. But left-wing extremists in government have it in their heads that once they attain power, your job as a citizen is to sit down, shut up, and pay for everything and let them run your life. This attitude permeates irresponsible government across our land from Capitol Hill to the Board of Education. In Loud Loudoun County, Virginia last night, for example, parents protesting against critical race theory broke into song when the school board there ended public comment because the status on the school board had determined that we, the people, were too boisterous. All right, for all of you uh, anti-American socialists out there, that was the U.S. National Anthem. I felt compelled to give you that information because when that song is usually sung, you're usually the ones kneeling down. Just wanted to clarify. The parents really ticked off the school board overseers there because the police showed up and started making arrests on parents whose free speech was making the school board members uncomfortable. That leads me to Simon Campbell. He was speaking to the Pensbury School District in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. The subject was the First Amendment and how school boards like Pensbury are abridging that vital constitutional right. Mr. Campbell, a former citizen of Great Britain, I believe, has seen this scenario play out before in his native country. When he ran for school board in Pensbury, this new American made sure he lived up to our highest principles of free speech. Your proposed new school board policy seeking once again to limit the constitutionally protected speech of American citizens. Now, when I sat on this school board, I believe some of you old timers might remember this, a union guy spoke at public comment for five minutes and ripped me a new one. He called me the bastard child of Margaret Thatcher. And I sat there and I said to myself, okay, fair enough, welcome to America. He considers me a bastard because I'm in the government. His logic is sound. Now. What happened was the superintendent and the school solicitor at the time freaked out and they didn't put the tape online the next day. And I called them up and I said, get the tape online now before we get sued for censorship. Hmm, Mr. Campbell then proceeded to read his superintendent the riot act for censoring a left-wing nut who was calling him names. Why? Because Mr. Campbell, a new American, treasures free speech unlike cradle-born American Democrats. I yelled at the solicitor to, and I asked him what law school he went to because it was clearly constitutionally protected rhetorical hyperbole. I can cite the case if you'd like. And I said to Paul along the superintendent at the time, don't ever cut the tape again, Paul. And by the way, bastard child of Margaret Thatcher, I took it as a compliment. Now, you snowflakes apparently have a bigger problem with public comment. It seems to me that you think you can supersede the United States Constitution. Well, hmm. seems that the Pensbury School District and the board have instituted policies designed to restrict the voices of their citizen parents. There are emails, 
public record emails in which the director of equity is lobbying and advocating for public comment to be censored in this school district. And you know what? You know what? Lobbying for it, advocating for it. We've got the school board president saying she'll do better at hitting the moot button in blatant violation of the Constitution for her lobbying and her advocacy of unconstitutional censorship. I want you, the school board, to terminate the employment of Dr. Charissa Gibson with immediate effect. There's that word again, folks, equity. In short, Equity means that if a man sits on his rear end, does nothing, he deserves the same treatment, wealth, and privilege as the man who works very hard and earns things. Equity is communism. It's not equality, which gives all of us an equal chance to succeed or fail. And when parents point this out, school boards like the one in Pensbury School District in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, they seek to silence that dissent, and they certainly won't tolerate being called out directly. I've got news for you, school board president Benito Mussolini. Your power does not supersede that of the U.S. Constitution and the First Amendment rights of the citizens of this great nation. Let's be very, very clear who has the power. Mr. It is Campbell, not government I will policy. You, I will do warn not you, warn me or do not interrupt this my moment. time. That if, if you, you interrupt my time, do not interrupt like that again, my or time. You you see what happens when you call these leftists out? The school board president, an elected official, didn't like being identified with a dictator that he likely is. But you know something? Too damn bad. When I got into this media business, a mentor of mine said, hey, Chris, if you can't handle criticism, don't get into the public arena. My mentor was right. Some people agree with me, others don't. And in America, that's okay. That the same standard used to exist for elected leaders, too, but that was before the corruption of schools, the press, and the Democrat Socialist Party. Now the standard is a conservative can be called names, but Democrats get to unleash their destruction without any verbal opposition. It's the same mentality that Democrats exhibit in, in wanting to get rid of the filibuster. You know, it was okay when leftists used the filibuster to defeat the GOP agenda when the GOP controlled the White House and Congress. But now... Left-wingers and these extremists on MSNBS say the filibuster is the same as apartheid. And these officials in GovEd want to be able to indoctrinate whole generations of our kids, force parents to pay for it all, and then silence any dissent. Mr. Campbell had an answer for that, too. From the U.S. Supreme Court, the, just, the judges wrote that... This nation is founded on the, quote, profound national commitment to the principle that debate on public issues shall be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, and that it may well include vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp attacks on government and public officials. That's constitutional case law in this nation. I don't have to be nice to you. Nobody behind me has to be nice to you. If you don't like living in the United States of America, then you can all move to Russia, Cuba, or China. This is the First Amendment. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear how popular socialist Democrats are in local school boards? By the way, the case that Mr. Campbell cited was the New York Times versus Sullivan in 1964. It was a landmark case that stated that American public officials were not entitled to undertake their policy prescriptions without hearing coarse words from the only people who count, the citizens of the United States. Why did I show you this tonight? Well, why can Senator Schumer threaten two sitting Supreme Court justices, use a derogatory word for mentally challenged kids, and yet suffer no consequences, but angry parents can't shout from the rooftops their opposition to the teaching of the racist and hate-filled critical race theory? Why is the GOP accused of racism when they use the filibuster, but Democrat socialists can use it without criticism from a corrupt press? It's because, my friends, we accept the double standard. Is the GOP timid? Yes. But we can't afford to be anymore. If the Republicans are going to cower and allow their constituents to be harmed by anti-American socialists, then it's up to us to rise up and leave both parties behind. Only Democrat voters elect socialists who then unleash policies that cause massive crime waves doing harm to those very same voters. Only Democrat voters accept the harm their leaders do to them. GOP voters don't, or at least they shouldn't. 
Why did I show you these videos tonight? I showed it to you because what Mr. Campbell just did needs to be replicated all over this country, from your school boards all the way to the Congress and even the presidency. I'm not being rhetorical when I say that our republic's very survival depends on it. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.